Well, this is Brother Peter with Tidbits from the Word. Let's look in the parable in uh, 28 to 30 in the book of Luke, chapter 18. We're reading some of the parables and we're liking them unto the kingdom of heaven as God did. And we're saying, we're asking questions today to ourselves. Am I a good well of water? Am I a spiritual or am I carnal? Am I a healthy spiritual person or am I a carnal spiritual person? Am I sick spiritually? Have I not come up to what I need to spiritually? Have I not been turned a, a corner in my spiritual life? Turned a corner in my life where my children might would say, something's happened to daddy. He's, he's reading the Bible all the time now. He's following the Lord. He he, you know something? He, he gave up the liquor and he gave up the swearing. And, and do you know, he's even put his cigarettes down. Uh, something's uh, uh, funny about daddy. He's different now. And are you that daddy? Are you a daddy that has turned aside the devil and are following the Lord now? Have said, Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Come in my heart and save my soul. Are you a mama? Are you a brother or sister? Are you a young one, 11-year-old boy, 10-year-old boy? Are you somebody who has now given your life to Jesus Christ to where he is making a difference in your life and others are seeing that difference and you are becoming a good stream that people could dip a cup of water out of and say, I'd like to go that way. When you start, that spiritual reputation, you must continue to let it grow, to make it grow. A baby that is malnourished gets stunted growth. His stunted growth caused him to have very serious physical problems, phys mental problems, all kinds of problems come to a baby that is malnourished. If you are just got saved and you do not attend your fellowship hall where you fellowship, if you do not attend three times a week, three, that Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday, you say, Brother Peter, why? I don't see that in the Bible. Why should I go three times a week? I can't find three times a week in the Bible. The Bible said to forsake not the fellowshipping of yourself together. That is when the man of God that has chosen to be the man over you. And by the way, every single solitary Christian has to have a preacher over them. Has to have an overstudy. You cannot be an understudy without an overstudy. You must have a man who has achieved the studying, has achieved the living close enough to God, has achieved giving himself to God enough, so God has put him in the position of being the over-shepherd of the flock. And if you get into a flock, you must fellowship with that flock. You Sunday morning goers, you people who go Sunday morning and say, that's all I want. That's not all you need, my friend. It may be all you want, but it's not all you need. If you can't kick yourself in the honey and get down there Sunday night, and Wednesday night, and if there's a special meeting on Tuesday, if there's a special prayer meeting, you say, well, I'm a man, I don't know how to pray. Well, learn. Come down and learn. Come to your church. There's going to be a prayer meeting. Come to your church. There's going to be a revival meeting. Go to it. Seek out to hear from other men like yourself, of like passion, who have said, I believe in Jesus Christ. I've asked him to come into my heart. I've asked him to forgive me on my sin. Now the way I'm going to prove it is I'm going to live for him. How can you live for somebody you don't know? Let's look at what, what uh, the warning to the rich man from Jesus was. Here was the guy that said, I do all and I ought to enter the kingdom of heaven because of what I do. Paul said this. He said, though I bestow all of my goods, Though I give to the poor, though I do everything and I don't do it under the Spirit of God, I do it in the flesh. 
I have become sound and brass and tinkling cymbal, and I am worthless. And none of that is going to be in the kingdom of heaven. For me, listen to Peter said, Peter said, Lo, we have left all and followed thee. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left his houses, or his parents, or his brethren, or his wife, or his children, for the kingdom of God's sake, who shall not receive manifold more in this present time, and in the world to come, an everlasting and he's saying that everything you give up here, you will have an everlasting thing. Then he took unto him the twelve and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and all that are written by the prophet concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished. What he's saying here is that all the promises that were in the Bible are going to be accomplished. Because he was talking about himself here going up Jerusalem, being delivered unto the uh, Gentile and shall be mocked and, and shall be spit, spit on and treated bad and uh, and and they shall uh, scourge him and put him to death. And he was talking about he was going to go to his death. But every promise, he said, that's been made to you will be fulfilled. You will, if you leave your family for me. What he's saying here, you don't have to even leave your house to leave your mother, to leave your father, to leave your wife, to leave your children. You don't leave anywhere other than you change your ways. He's saying, do not put these before me. Put me first and then them. Now, how do you do that, Brother Peter? Well, I got saved. I had a brother that, that we used to drink some together. And I quit drinking with him. He came home and got mad at me. He said, oh, you're holier than thou now. You don't have nothing to do with me. I said, no, it isn't that, brother. It said, I've changed now and I do different. I'm not out there in the bar, bar room anymore. I'm not drinking and carousing anymore. I've given my life over to Jesus Christ. And he is Lord of my life now. And he doesn't drink. And he don't smoke and he don't swear and he don't go to the beer joint. And he doesn't do those things and he's living in me. So therefore, I can't take him over there. He's not happy if I take him to the beer joint. And if he's not happy, I'm not happy because he's in me. And it irks my heart for me to carry him into the beer joint. And he said, I don't want to be here. And so therefore, I can't go there anymore. So... And that's what he meant by leaving. When he talked about hating, he was what he's saying is you don't hate the person, you hate the sin that is there. So you have to divide yourself from it and separate from it. And our mothers and fathers, the Bible says in the end times, there will be mothers against sons, sons against mothers, fathers against uh, children, children against fathers, and the whole house is going to be arrayed against each other because a man got saved. Wow. It's just the opposite of what it was when things were good. When things were spiritually good in the United States of America, families were joined in unions. They got together. They worshipped together. They got up in the morning. They prayed together. They ate together. They ate at the table together. They read the Bible together. They had their devotions at home at night. They had everything, and the family was a union. And now the family's all in turmoil. It's not a union anymore. It's a group of individuals living in a house, trying to make it a home. It will never become a home until it is unionized, all in the spirit of Jesus Christ and of God. And the only way that's going to happen is get in the book. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God, and that's the only way fellowship True fellowship is going to come by the word of God.